Hello viewers and welcome to yet another Warhammer 40,000 Conquest video production. My name is Mitch and I am the Hive Tyrant. Today we have Sam Mann playing as the Orcs Faction Warlord, Old Zogwart, against his friend Eugenio, Octagon user EU8L1CH. So Eugenio is playing the Space Marines Warlord, Captain Cato Sicarius, and uh, Sam Mann is going to be playing the Orcs. In taking a look at Old Zogwart's ability, as soon as he commits to a planet or is declared as an attacker, he creates a Snotlings token, and at the end of the combat phase, he ends up having to destroy each and every Snotlings token he controls. Captain Cato Sicarius, of course, whenever he happens to destroy an enemy unit, or an enemy unit happens to be destroyed at his planet, he ends up gaining one resource. It looks as though Sam Sam has decided to keep his starting hand of cards, whereas Eugenio has decided to take a mulligan. In taking a look at our assortment of planets, planet number one is going to be Yavarn, which puts units into play. Planet two is going to be Iridial, which removes damage. This is very important because one uh, primary means with which Old Zogwart attempts to win is through potential warlord assassination. Planet three is going to be Taurus, which rewards units for keeping their unit count as low as as possible, and planet number four is going to be Elowith, which allows players to tutor the top three cards of their deck for their chosen card, and to put the remaining two cards at the bottom of their deck. And our fifth and final planet happens to be Barless, which discards a card at random upon triggering that battle ability. Sam happens to have our initiative token. His initial play is a two-cost Evil Sun's Warbiker deployed to the first planet. As soon as it happens to be at the same planet as an enemy warlord, it happens to gain an attack bonus of two. We see Eugenio put out a Void Pirate to the fourth planet, uh, opposite of Sam's shoot -a mob which happens to be a one command icon orc unit, which is currently depriving uh, Eugenio of that Void Pirate card bonus. Sam still has four resources and five cards, relative to Eugenio's six resources, six cards. Something curious to keep in mind for this match is that there's likely to be quite the economic discrepancy between these two. Captain Cato Sicarius very much excels in regard to accumulating resource tokens, whereas the orcs as a faction tend to struggle in an economic sense. It looks as though Eugenio has decided to play a copy of the Blood Angels Veterans, played opposite Sam's Evil Sun's Warbiker at the first planet. It happens to prevent one point of damage if it takes an attack while ready, and that means that if Sam manages to send his warlord to this first planet that Evil Sun's Warbiker attacks for four, the Blood Angels veterans with even a single shield icon will end up surviving that attack. So it's entirely possible that we could see Cato also committed to the first planet just to destroy as many Snotlings tokens as possible, just to try and kill off a bunch of those orcs, because each dead token ends up being one additional resource for Cato. We see Sam play out another copy of shoot -a mob the second copy we've seen thus far, played to planet number three, and we see a Sicarius's Chosen played to planet number two by Captain Cato Sicarius. It manages to successfully damage the Evil Sun's Warbiker and reel it over, so that means that that uh, two-cost unit's very close to being destroyed, and Sam responds by putting out a Snakebite Thug at planet number one, so it's a 3-4 after it resolves its attack, it takes a point of damage, it's not going to be able to kill that Blood Angels veterans in a single swing, but it can nevertheless deal out quite a bit of damage and is uh, rather formidable to boot as a 3-4. Our players are both choosing where exactly to send their warlords, I can only imagine that uh, Sam is probably going to push these planets as hard as possible. I'll be curious to see whether or not he ends up going to planet number one or planet number two. I would assume planet number one, just to be absolutely certain he can try to kill off these uh, Space Marines units. Uh, Eugenio at the moment doesn't actually have any resources, and uh, in taking a look at the command struggles he's likely to win, he's 
not actually going to be winning uh, an adequate number of resources, regardless of where he sends his warlord, in order to be able to afford something like uh, anything more than an eager recruit. So if he can only win one resource, we're not going to be able to see a drop pot assault, but of course as soon as Kato ends up killing an orc unit, he's going to start generating resource tokens to fund all sorts of nasty different effects. So will Kato go to planet one? Will Kato potentially go to planet number two? Could he even go to planet number four to try and kill off a shoot -a mob and generate some additional cards? It looks as though both of our players have now successfully chosen a destination for their warlords. And for Sam, we do indeed see planet number one. For Kato, we end up seeing planet number two. So Zogwart's going to have initiative at planet number one. He's going to immediately generate a Snotlings token since he's been committed to the planet. Sam goes ahead and generates ten of those for himself just to uh, act as a bit of a reservoir since we're likely to see a ton of those throughout the course of the game. And of course, Captain Kato Sicarius is going to have initiative at his planet, so hopefully the Space Marine player is going to be able to clear out this uh, one hit point remaining Evil Sun's War Biker before it has an opportunity to attack for four. In regard to command, Sam is going to be winning at planets one and three, and it looks as though planet number two is going to be won by our Space Marine players, so Sam ends up drawing one card, two resources, whereas Captain Kato Sicarius ends up drawing one card. There's going to be a battle here at planet Yavarn. It looks as though the earliest any player could win is as early as our third planet. Uh, and then after that, somebody could just as easily win at planet number four. We've got uh, two, three icon planets very early on. Both players indicate that they don't have any actions at the onset of combat. Sam's opening attack is going to be the snakebite thug taking a swing at the Blood Angels veterans. He's immediately going to deal out two points of damage thanks to that unit's reaction while it's ready. And in response... What is Eugenio going to attack? Keep in mind, we do have this Snotlings token sitting at the first planet as well. But it is going to be destroyed at the end of the combat phase. The Blood Angels veterans exhausts to attack. It takes a swing at Old Zogwart. And we see the Weird Boy Stick, the signature attachment for Old Zogwart, discarded in order to prevent all of that damage. And that's going to be absolutely fantastic because Sam is probably going to want to push these planets as hard as possible. And if he can keep Zogwart uh, in combat for as long as he can, that's absolutely fantastic. So every single point point of damage ignored is going to potentially be critical in regard to just the outcome of this game. Old Zogwart does take a swing, he generates a Snotlings token and that Blood Angels veteran is outright destroyed. And it looks like unless we've got a drop pot assault or anything like that, but keep in mind there's absolutely no resources to fund an effect like that, uh, there's no eager recruit, there's no drop pot assault. It seems as though Sam has chosen to trigger Yavarn. He puts a Steel Legion Chimera into play, uh, into his headquarters. I can only imagine... Okay, it looks like Eugenio chooses to put a copy of Sycarius's Chosen into play. But of course, since it's not sitting at a planet, it uh, has no opportunity to trigger that reaction. So Sam put into play a three-cost unit, as did Eugenio. It looks as though that battle at planet number two, that Evil Sun's War Biker, is going to be outright destroyed by the attack of his Sycarius's Chosen. Uh, Kato Sycarius ends up generating a resource, and of of course, he was left unexhausted in order to uh, retreat just in case some uh, nasty, you know, event or something would have been played. Although the orcs normally don't have anything of the kind. We see our headquarters phase occur. Theron is our new fifth planet. It allows players to route non-warlord units, but seeing as how we're expecting such an early game victory, I can't imagine that anybody's going to be doing too much at that planet. We see the initiative token passed to Eugenio. His first play ends up being the Talisarian Tempest Blade put out on Captain Kato Sicarius, so he's going to be attacking for three Armor Bane, which is incredibly 
incredibly potent, incredibly dangerous. We see a Steel Legion Chimera at planet number two, played by Sam, and uh, both of those copies of that unit he happens to possess are as soon as a non-vehicle unit you control is assigned damage, you prevent one of that damage. So even uh, Captain Kato's armor bane swings are now going to be uh, decreased by one attack value, so long as it's not the actual Chimera itself being attacked. It looks as though Eugenio has chosen to put out a Void Pirate into play, and uh, interestingly, he chooses to put this at planet number 5, Farron, so he's if he wins command there, that'll be worth two resources, one card for him. Sam puts out a copy of Crush Face, and that uh, just goes to show that he's anticipating heavily deploying orcs out to planet number 2. So as soon as he deploys another orc unit at planet number 2, its cost is reduced by one. And at the present moment, it is once again Eugenio's opportunity to deploy units. He's got three resources, four cards, relative to Sam's one resource and two cards. And at the present moment, it looks like uh, our Space Marine player has a small economic lead, made much more significant by the presence of this Void Pirate and, of course, Cato's ability himself. In regard to where these units are going to end up deployed, I could easily have seen them going to the first planet, so unsurprisingly we see a copy of Sicarius is Chosen played by Eugenio at the first planet. He chooses to target one of Sam's shoot -a mobs at planet number two. It takes one point of damage and is immediately destroyed. Uh, the Steel Legion Chimera, of course, its reaction only triggers off of damage dealt by an attack, as opposed to dealt by a card effect, so that damage outright obliterates that low-cost one-command orc. It seems as though both of our players have indeed passed, and now it's time for them to pick where they would like to put units. I could easily see Captain Cato Sicarius going to planet number two in order to try to uh, win Taurus. I believe at the present moment he has one, two, three, four, five, six units relative to Sam's six units, but seeing as how we're likely to have all manner of snotling tokens uh, generated. Uh, it could be quite likely that our Space Marine player might be able to benefit from triggering Taurus to add to Kato's uh, economy boosting ability. And of course, these two chosen sitting at planet number one are going to be pretty daunting in regard to uh, deterring Sam. It's entirely possible he could go to planet number one. I wouldn't be surprised by that. The longer that Zogwart manages to stay in combat, the more tokens he gen generates, the nastier everything gets. I could see Kato going to either planet, frankly. It looks as though both of our players have indeed chosen where they'd like their units deployed, and let's see what they choose. Sam indeed chose planet number two, and curiously, Captain Cato Sicarius seems as though out of nowhere to have chosen planet number three, just to ensure that he wins uh, that grand total of three cards, I suppose, and he's going to be able to destroy that shoot -a mob absolutely trivially. And of course, at this point, it looks as though Sam has uh, chosen to give up the fight at planet number one. Fortunately, there are no wounded space marine units uh, to trigger Iridial's ability against or for. Sam ends up uh, winning one card, one resource, and that's not looking good because our space marine player ends up pulling in five cards and two resources, and seeing as how Kato normally is starved for cards as opposed to tokens, that's absolutely huge. Uh, we see Sam with a total of two resources, three cards, Cards relative to Eugenio's two resources and eight cards, and as soon as this shoot -a mob gets obliterated by that three attack armor bane, that's just going to be another resource for our Space Marines player to fund effects like Indomitable, the Fury of Sicarius, Drop Pot Assault, Eager Recruit, even Veteran Brother Maxos, and all kinds of nasty elites. The Battle at the First Planet uh, basically passes without any kind of significant occurrence. Both of our players have 
happen to have one icon of each type, material, strong point, and technology. The ability at planet number two, uh, I do not believe is going to be triggered. So we see six units controlled by our Space Marine player, but we see seven controlled by Sam because of this little Snotlings token. So if our Orc player is kicking himself for choosing Zogwart over Nosdreg, uh, now would be the time, if ever. The Sycarius is chosen at planet number three, ends up taking a swing and destroying that shoot -a mob and I suppose Captain Cato Sycarius uh, is left ready in case he needed to retreat. Maybe Sam could have done something like a Snotling attack, I forget what phase that card has to be played during, and of course, uh, yet another card bonus for Captain Cato Sycarius, he manages to tutor the top three cards of his deck and put the remaining two at the bottom. It looks as though he has chosen a card. He need not reveal that card. And Kato's going to bounce back to his headquarters. And then we're going to have each player draw a grand total of uh, four resource tokens and two additional cards, making that economic discrepancy all the greater between these two uh, warlords. Unfortunately, it seems as though Sam is relatively well set up at uh, Taurus here. But at the present moment, it seems as though we're not actually going to be seeing a victory until Barless. Uh, if um, one player were to win Taurus, then they could potentially win through Barless. Otherwise, this could be potentially quite the long game. We see Sam take the initiative token. He puts out a copy of the Enraged Orc. It's a zero attack, brutal unit with five hit points, and it makes him just absolutely almost guaranteed to be able to hold down Taurus. So that means I can only imagine our Space Marine player might try to deposit these two copies of Sycarius' Chosen at Barless. He could definitely stand to benefit from having those additional cards, but curiously we see our Space Marines player put a 10th Company Scout at Barless, which means maybe he's instead going to be trying to head to Elowith again to draw as many cards as just absolutely possible. We see Sam put out a copy of Ammo Depot, which he could trigger now should he choose to do so. He can draw one card so long as he has three or fewer cards in hand. So as soon as our Space Marine player takes his action, we may well see Sam simply choose to trigger that Ammo Depot. But what exactly is Kato going to do? And of course, he answers the question as I'm in the process of asking it by putting out a copy of Earthcast Technician. He searches the top six cards of his deck for any attachment or drone he may happen to find and let's see uh, what he ultimately retrieves he likely has ion rifles or something like that it seems as though Eugenio did not actually find anything in those top six cards, so he has to put all of those at the bottom. Sam ends up using his action as uh, triggering this ammo depot, and now it's back to our Space Marines player. He happens to have five resources, nine cards remaining, relative to Sam's four resources, four cards. So what is next for our Space Marine? It looks like we see a copy of Kato's Stronghold, the signature support, whereas as soon as an enemy unit is destroyed, we can exhaust the support to ready a target Space Marines unit at the same planet. And this is extraordinarily potent because Captain Kato Sicarius could swing for three armor bane. He could potentially, say, destroy a snakebite thug or something like that, generate a resource, and then as a reaction, uh, Kato could be readied to attack again or retreat, all manner of different nasty effects. We see Sam put out an Evil Sun's Warbiker to Taurus, uh, which is making it all the less likely that Kato would dare try to contest this planet, and of course it only happens to cost him a single resource because of Crush Face here. I wouldn't be surprised if Sam ends up winning Taurus and then tries to deploy the following round all of these units to Barless, and unsurprisingly we see a copy of Tactical Squad Cardenas put out uh, at planet number three. It happens to be an area effect one unit, and considering just how many units uh, Sam is amassing, that could be absolutely incredible, and especially seeing as how once we get to that planet, uh, I suppose Sam will have the initiative at that point, but he'll be generating a bunch of additional tokens if Kato happens to be present when that area 
effect goes off if he manages to kill a bunch of tokens or a bunch of just weak vulnerable units then that could be just absolutely devastating in regard to ensuring Kato's economy is incredibly strong for drop pot assaults and eager recruits and all kinds of just absolutely horrific effects. It seems as though both of our players are now choosing where exactly they'd like to commit their warlords. I cannot see old Zogwart going to our first planet, but I suppose it is possible. I could see him going to planet number two to try to win some cards, uh, try to kill off this copy of uh, Sakarius is chosen just because Zogwart swings for only one, but that token swings for one. As soon as uh, Zogwart attacks, there will be another token swinging for one, and that could ultimately be pretty nasty. I suppose I wouldn't be tremendously surprised, therefore, if Kato goes to planet number two just to try to lock that down. Sam could easily go to planet number four to try to uh, hit Farron and ultimately rout a unit like this tactical squad, Cardenas but what exactly are we going to see from both players? Alright, so Kato has chosen his destination. Let's see what both of our players reveal. Where are they going to go? Alright, it looks as if uh, Sam has indeed chosen planet number four, which is going to be Farron, so he can snipe off that Void Pirate. He can likely try to uh, win command there, and it does seem as though Captain Cato Sicarius wants to ensure that those two copies of Sicarius' chosen are indeed planted at Barless in order to prevent Sam from winning that planet. I suppose I happen to uh, forget about the existence of these two units accompanying Cato in his uh, HQ, and and now in hindsight, it seems abundantly clear that that was really the only option for where Kato would want to go. Uh, once again, a tremendous discrepancy. Sam only manages to draw one card and generate three resources relative to Kato's six cards and single resource. Sam is going to be able to win Taurus, and it seems as though his unit count is indeed lower than our Space Marine player. He ends up drawing three cards, and uh, Iridial is won by Sam. That means all that Sam has to do is win another red or green icon, and the game is his. So uh, we can't see a victory from Sam uh, at Elwith, but we can see a victory at Barlas or Farron or Planum, any other planet other than the next turns first. Uh, Barless's battle ability is indeed triggered, and we see Sam randomly discard a hostile environment gear. So that's a one shield icon card, and it would have conferred an additional three points of HP uh, to any unit there. It seems as though old Zogwart is able to absolutely obliterate that Void Pirate entirely unopposed, and that means he's going to be able to trigger Farron's battle ability, and he's going to be able to pick and choose whichever of these Space Marine units he would like to uh, avoid. So not only is he going to generate a Snotlings token that's not actually going to do anything, but he's going to have free reign in order to uh, route whichever unit he would like. I can only imagine it's going to be this tactical squad, and it seems as though quite wisely Sam opted not to uh, trigger old Zogwart's reaction. He did not generate an additional Snotlings token just to ensure that he would be able to trigger Taurus's battle ability. So very clever play by Sam. And unfortunately for Sam, we now see a drop pod assault. So it seems as though Eugenio has searched the top six cards of his deck, found a copy of Sicarius' Chosen, and that unit has now entered play, and it's going to be able to get in some attacks on those Snotlings tokens on old Zogwart, and now we can start to see some of that damage accumulate. It's unlikely that old Zogwart might ever die, or maybe even be bloodied, uh, at least at this point in the game, but because old Zogwart is at some point going to show up at Barless, it's probably going to be critically important that uh, as many damage tokens as possible are dumped on old Zogwart, just so that it's easier to bloody him, it's easier to remove him from a planet 
planets in order to uh, prevent him from generating token after token after token. The Sicarius is chosen, takes a swing. Sam is trying to determine, does he want to shield? We see six resources and now five cards in Sam's hand and uh, no resources, 12 cards for a Space Marine player. Sam discards a copy of the signature event, Launch to Snots, uh, in order to only take one damage with Zogwart, and that would have allowed any orc unit he controls to gain plus attack equal to the number of Snotlings tokens at that planet uh, as a reaction to its attack. So there's no window for the opponent to respond with an Archon's Terror or anything to that effect. We see that Sycarius is chosen retreat at the end of combat so that it can uh so that it can show up at the next planet i suppose it wasn't going to really do too much more against zogwart who would have been able to swing for one you know maybe sam would have had additional shields uh, ultimately sam does win that battle farin routes that tactical squad cardenas and now we're about to see a new game round so once again a tremendous economic lead uh in regard to command struggles about to be won by our space marine player we do see sam with 10 resources and 7 cards relative to Eugenio's 4 resources and 14 cards. So even though there's a big resource difference between both players, Cato's very likely at this decisive battle to generate a ton of resources, and his hand is absolutely chock full of Space Marine events, I can only imagine. He's drawn through 7 more cards in his deck at the present moment than has Sam. So what exactly are we going to see? Our initiative token is in the hands of our Space Marine player, the only remaining planets are uh, Tutoring Effect, Random Discard, Routing, and then Moving Units. We see a Vashia Trailblazer, a Tau uh, Command Unit, played out at planet number 3 by our Space Marine, and we see Sam splash a Rogue Trader onto planet number 4, so he's trying to break even if he can't manage to win any command of his own, and mercilessly we see a copy of Promotion played out by Cato Sicarius onto his Earthcast Technician at planet number 4, which is almost certainly going to ensure that that rogue trader is not going to be generating any additional economy for Sam anytime soon. Sam puts out a copy of Rogue Trader at Farron, opposite that two-command Vashia Trailblazer, so I would imagine that must indicate that Sam has a promotion or some such effect in his hand, and once again it's up to our Space Marine player to play out a unit. The battle is uh, going to be Elowith this turn for sure. I can only imagine that Sam is going to try to set himself up favorably at this second planet, which is going to be his victory condition. But all the same, uh, Kato's not actually going to be able to win until he gains an additional icon of some sort, and therefore the earliest Kato can win is going to be Planum, so it's either going to be an extraordinarily long game, or... Uh over very very quickly we see a copy of zogwart's runt herders the signature army unit put out at planet number three by uh sam and we also happen to see sam put a copy of steel legion chimera into play so it's going to be a lot of ignored attack damage uh it seems as if our space marine player has chosen to replace the tactical squad cardenas that was routed away from planet number two so this is going to look very nasty Nasty for Sam indeed, just because if Cato shows up at Barlas to try to block Sam winning the game at that planet, uh, his first action can be this tactical squad Cardenas uh, triggering an area effect one volley, and seeing as how uh, Cato still has 11 cards in hand and he's likely going to be winning quite a bit of command at the moment, he could have any number of different crushing blows in hand. It seems as if Sam has chosen to go to planet number three, and curiously, Captain Cato Sicarius has also chosen to go to planet number three. So Cato's, uh, you know, there are a hell of a lot of units arriving exhausted at this planet, but they're all going to be fighting over who exactly is going to get to route a unit. Elowith is going to go essentially uncontested by Sam, but there's going to be an enormous battle 
battle taking place at the first planet, and our initiative token is going to be in the hands of the Space Marine player. It seems as though once again Eugenio pulls even further ahead in an economic sense, reeling in an additional incredible five cards in one resource, and I would imagine we're about to see at least a few resources generated by our Space Marine player. Uh, Sam has uh, opted to go to Farron here, I suppose just because he thought this was as safe as anywhere, and so long as he can continue to protect Farron, he can eventually win the game, and if he can win a battle at Farron round after round, he can keep routing away enemy units that may serve to be problematic, so uh, it's going to be up to Sam to try to uh, bloody Kato or banish Kato from that planet, and then as soon as he manages to do so, he can try to kill off this uh, tactical squad Cardenas, and then it's very much going to be an uphill battle for our Space Marine player to try to get through this giant uh, just brick of uh, orcs. It seems as though Eugenio happened to forget drawing an additional card from one of his Void Pirates, and at the present moment we're going to be having a battle at the first planet. It seems as though no uh, actions are played by either of our players, and Elowith's ability is of course uh, triggered by Eugenio, entirely uncontested, so once again he gets to search through his deck for the top three cards, and at the present moment he only has 16 cards remaining, so he's drawn a grand total of 13 more cards than has Sam at the present moment, which is just absolutely absurd. He doesn't really have any resources to speak of, but again, there's Cato's ability, and if you take a look at uh, the amount of resources he's invested into the field, it's absolutely absurd. So there is going to be a battle taking place at Farron, and this is going to be dirty indeed. So Cato is going to be able to swing and essentially kill whatever unit he would like, and then as soon as a unit is destroyed, Cato's uh, stronghold can exhaust in order to ready a unit, or we could see the readying of this tactical squad Cardenas. I'm very curious to see how all of this is going to go down. Cato could clear out this Zogwart's Runt Herders. He could deal three uh, armor bane damage to old Zogwart. It seems like Eugenio is lost in thought, but what are we going to see? It seems of the just critical importance that this tactical squad Cardenas ends up getting readied, just because each and every area effect volley is going to be so incredibly potent. And as soon as, you know, there's damage dealt by a space marine, Marine unit, then Crushing Blow could make it all the nastier so that uh, we could see some of these, you know, incredibly dangerous orc units just picked apart. Like this Evil Sun's War Biker is attacking for four, so long as it happens to be present at a planet with a warlord. All right, so after a bit of a break, we finally see Captain Cato Sicarius Exhaust to attack. What exactly is he going to attack? And it seems as though he's taking a swing at the Steel Legion Chimera. So he's going to end up uh, playing out a copy of Crushing Blow in order to deal a grand total of four entirely unshieldable and unpreventable damage to destroy that Chimera in a single swing. He can now trigger Kato's Stronghold. I can only imagine it seems as though he's actually readying Captain Kato Sicarius. So it's now going to be Sam's turn to respond. And we see a copy of Battle Cry played out. So this is going to be each orc unit gets plus two attack until the end of the battle. So this is only units that are currently uh, in play. Any snotlings created after the trigger of this event are not actually going to gain benefit from this effect. But we see a Snotlings token take a swing at Cato for three. We see a promotion discarded in order to negate one point of damage. And now once again, it is Eugenio's opportunity to attack. He could retreat with Cato. He could attack with Cato. But what exactly are we going to see? If he does happen to attack with Cato, he's going to have to deal with uh, two more three damage attacks plus another attack of one from a Snotlings token that is generated upon Old Zogwart being attacked, which is quite a bit of damage, but at the same time, uh, Kato does happen to have a hell of a lot of cards in hand, currently 16, and that's likely to be a lot of shields. 
we see the Vashya Trailblazer exhaust to take a swing at old Zogwart. It's only going to be attacking for one. Uh, Sam indicates that he's got his Steel Legion Chimeras and uh, seems as though Eugenio perhaps rescinds his attack. All right, so we see a small alteration in uh, the course of action here. So the Vashya Trailblazer takes a swing at a Steel Legion Chimera, and it now uh, sets it up with one point of damage, where Captain Cato Sicarius could easily finish the fight in uh, dealing out three armor bane damage. The Zogwart's Runt Herders is swinging for three against Captain Cato Sicarius, and what kind of shields does uh, Eugenio happen to have in that hand of his? We see a copy of Iron Halo Disc Discarded, which means that Kato is only going to end up taking one point of damage. Of course, it's now Kato's opportunity to attack, to retreat. What exactly are we going to see? We only see old Zogwart with an attack value of three until the end of the battle. So is Kato going to retreat? Is he going to take a swing and kill off this uh, Steel Legion Chimera? What exactly is going to happen? We do see Kato exhaust, and he takes a swing. He's going to end up killing that uh, Steel Legion Chimera. So it is discarded, and now old Zogwart, I can only imagine, is going to end up swinging at Kato. Both players indicate they have no actions, and indeed, old Zogwart exhausts. He generates a Snotling token, which only happens to have one attack. Old Zogwart himself takes a swing at Kato for three. Do we see a Nocturne Ultima Storm Bolter? Do we see a Drop Pod Assault? What can we expect in regard to shields? It seems as though we see another copy of Promotion discarded, so yet another one shield icon card, which means Kato now happens to be sitting at a grand total of five points of damage, so he had better have another single shield icon somewhere in that hand of his. We see an eager recruit put into play for a mere one resource, and of course it's now our Space Marine player's opportunity to attack. Is he going to destroy that Snotling's token? What exactly are we going to see? There is only one Steel Legion Chimera remaining, so it's going to be one point of damage that that Snotling's token would take if uh, we don't happen to have a shield card in Sam's hand. We do see the Eager Recruit take a swing at that Snotling's token. Sam simply allows it to be destroyed, which means it's going to ultimately generate an additional one resource for Kato, and now Sam is going to have to attack with this essentially worthless rogue trader. Sam indicates that he has no actions, and our Space Marine player ends up putting out a Drop Pod Assault. So it is going to be uh, Sam's opportunity to attack with this Zero Attack Rogue Trader. I'm not quite sure if it's been forgotten about, but we see an Honored Librarian interplay, which is going to be incredibly nasty. It attacks for four. It cannot actually be targeted uh, until we eventually see it destroyed, and it seems as though that Rogue Rogue Trader was very much not forgotten about uh, just because we see a suppressive fire that's going to exhaust that honored librarian and spare our orc player from taking a, a grand total of a swing of four. So that's a very nasty little trick from Sam's deck indeed. This battle cry is still going to be in play for quite a long time, and note that this uh, three attack Snotlings token is still very much alive, although as soon as this uh, tactical squad Cardenas gets a chance to attack, unless Sam preserves its life or preserves the life of any of these uh, relatively vulnerable units, um, you know, that's a potential lot of attack power that could be lost. What's kind of nice, though, is that uh, this copy of Tactical Squad Cardenas, each and every time it does that area effect volley and the Runt Herders end up taking a point of damage, they're going to end up generating a Snotling token, which is nice, uh, just because I can't imagine that Kato is going to want to stay at this planet. We see another copy of Eager Recruit uh, played out as yet another action by our Space Marine player, and this is going to allow him to attack unless he takes a swing at the Steel Legion Chimera. This attack is going to be decreased by one, but what exactly is he going to be attacking? 
We see him take an attack at the Steel Legion Chimera. Sam only happens to have two cards in hand. He does not choose to discard anything as shields, and now it's going to presumably be the end of the combat round. Our Space Marine is entirely out of resources with which to pay for events. All of these units ready, and it's going to be Kato's choice first. Does he want to retreat any of his units at all? What are we going to see? Note that Kato's stronghold is indeed exhausted, so if Kato attacks, he's leaving himself entirely open to be bloodied. Is it going to be worth it uh, to take out this Steel Legion Chimera? It seems as though Eugenio has exhausted all of his units, but is he going to be retreating? And he readies them again. All right, it looks like we see a grand total of four different Space Marine units retreat after several arduous, painstaking minutes of decision-making. So Cato Sicarius retreats, Avashia Trailblazer retreats, Honored Librarian and Tactical Squad Cardenas retreat, and we also happen to see Old Zogwart retreat on the Orc side. The initiative is still very much in the hands of our Space Marine player, and there are a lot of Orc units that still happen to possess that battle cry buff. In fact, every single unit remaining in play does indeed happen to possess that. We see Eugenio take a swing with the Eager Recruit, and it seems as though he's actually changing targets. So uh, instead of that Evil Sun's War Biker, the Steel Legion Chimera is ultimately destroyed. Sam chooses not to discard a shield card. Likely he does not have any cards left. The Evil Sun's War Biker is now attacking for four, down from six, since there's no longer a Warlord present. But it's still more than enough to obliterate that copy of Sicarius' chosen opposite on the uh, other side of the table here. Now it's our Space Marine player's opportunity to attack. No resources in his hand whatsoever, but he does happen to have this copy of Eager Recruit. There are now no longer any uh, Steel Legion Chimera on the table to reduce damage. Both players indicate they have no actions whatsoever. Is the Eager Recruit going to be attacking perhaps this Evil Sun's Warbiker? I guess he chooses to take a swing at Crush Face, and not surprisingly, we see a copy of Crushing Blow played out, uh, so that Crush Face is ultimately going to be destroyed by that effect. And now our uh, Orc player is going to have free reign here to just absolutely mop up these characters. We see both copies of Eager Recruits destroyed. Uh, clearly, our Space Marine player has decided to accept his fate, and we see uh, Farron trigger on that Earthcast technician that happened to have been promoted, so that this tactical squad, Cardenas, is now going to be essentially bound uh, to sit at the now first planet, uh, entirely unavailable to molest Sam at our now second planet, Farron. So the win condition for our Space Marine player is not actually going to occur until Planum, our third planet and the last planet on the field. Sam still happens to possess a tremendous number of units at Farron, and so long as he can manage to lock that down, uh, if he can manage to survive this onslaught of space marines from uh, our space marine players headquarters then he could uh, just defend the planet and potentially you know save himself the game if Sicarius ends up uh, deploying this huge retinue of units to our second planet and it's probably you know better that he get those units there uh, early as opposed to late the initiative token is in Sam's hand, so Sam will be able to take a swing and in all likelihood potentially bloody Captain Cato Sicarius unless we happen to see an Indomitable or something like that. And in fact, we're almost certain to see several copies of that event uh, in our Space Marine player's hand. Uh, Eugenio happens to possess 12 cards at the moment. He only has 13 cards remaining in his deck. He's still set up uh, to reel in some additional cards during the command phase, and seeing as how he's got four resources, that's plenty with which to uh, start to put some of those events onto the table. I believe he still has one copy of Drop Pot Assault left, an Eager Recruit, uh, at least one copy of Crushing Blow, 
and it's still up to our Space Marines player. What is he going to deploy? We see a copy of the Earthcast Technician. So yet another tutoring effect. I suppose he's digging through his deck, maybe for something along the lines of an ion rifle with which to attach to his honored librarian. I'm very curious to see. He does have to reveal a card, and he indicates he does not find what he was searching for. So that's the second time in this video that this Earthcast technician has entirely whiffed. Sam uses his deploy action to trigger his ammo depot in order to draw an additional card, and at the present moment, Eugenio has still drawn through 13 more cards than has Sam. So Sam has three resources, four cards, whereas Eugenio happens to possess three resources and 11 cards. We see a copy of Veteran Brother Maxos put out on Planum, and while that may seem like a strange or unusual choice, that does happen to be the one and only win condition for our Space Marine player, unless he manages to assassinate the one damage token possessing Hold Zogwart, and after several minutes of deliberation, Sam responds to that painstakingly deliberated move by immediately playing out a custom field generator. It seems as though our Space Marine player Kato has passed, and we immediately see an Evil Sun's Warbiker played for one, and a shoot -a mob played for zero, put out at Farin. So it's all gonna come down to units like these tactical squads just potentially dealing out a tremendous amount of damage uh, with or without the assistance of Kato's Stronghold, and we've yet to see a copy of Squig Bauman played by either of these players. So what exactly is our Space Marine going to do? Is he going to deploy to Farin now or wait until the following turn? I suppose uh, Kato has chosen to deposit this entire allotment of units at the final planet, whereas Sam, of course, has chosen to send Zogwart to uh, planet number two. And that means we're going to see uh, Sam's only remaining card discarded. I'm curious to see what exactly it is. And I'm also curious as to what our Space Marine player was thinking by setting up all of his forces here. Just because Sam is only one red icon away from winning the game, this uh, battle at Barlas is going to generate one green strong point icon for, uh, for our Space Marine player, but that's definitely not going to be what it's going to take to win him the game. Sam's randomly discarded card, the only card remaining in his hand, happens to be Barless. Uh, in regard to the command phase, I kind of glanced past it there. Uh, Eugenio ended up winning three cards, one resource, whereas Sam pulled in a grand total of three resources. Sam chooses to uh, route a copy of Rogue Trader, um, back to his own HQ just to make sure that it isn't destroyed, that it's not a bonus resource for our Captain Cato Sicarius. And uh, Cato only happens to have 10 resources left. He chooses to use Planum to shift a copy of Tactical Squad Cardenas over to Farin. So... So we see that uh, Tactical Squad Cardenas, the 10th Company Scout, and both copies of Sicarius is Chosen, of course, splash back to uh, Cato Sicarius's HQ. And of course, our players are going to go through the headquarters phase. They each draw two cards. They each generate a total of four resources. Cato only has eight cards remaining in his uh, deck. And now uh, Sam is sitting at seven resources, two cards, whereas Cato happens to have five resources, 15 cards. And I have to apologize if my commentary has been a bit lacking throughout the course of this game. A lot of extended downtime has resulted in fatigue appearing to catch up with me. We happen to see a copy of Tactical Squad Cardenas deployed out to Farin, and of course, presuming that Cato also deploys to Farin, that guarantees that the initiative is going to be in the hands of the Space Marine player, and he's going to have a hell of a lot of Tactical Squad squad area effect to benefit from. This Kato stronghold, as soon as a unit is destroyed, is going to be able to ready one of these tactical squad Cardenases, and then that's just going to be all the more volleys generating all the more resources, 
each and every attack from Sam could potentially be negated by something like an Indomitable, so it's definitely going to be a bit of an uphill struggle for our Orc player to try and win this game, even though it's looking reasonably good for him, things could still go very, very bad, and this is quite a few, you know, daunting Space Marine units uh, that are going to arrive exhausted, we could still see multiple units played out by Cato, so there's still a lot up in the air. All right, so Cato indicates that he has passed, and now we see Sam start to play an enraged orc, of course, only paying one for that because of crush face and that's going to be absolutely crucial in that it uh, benefits from that brutal keyword for each and every area effect volley that happens to go off we see a copy of the sanction psyker interplay which in all likelihood is probably going to be used to fund a suppressive fire which is yet another little means that uh, could be just absolutely crucial in sam trying to ensure that he's eventually going to win this planet to no one one surprise, both players choose to deploy their warlords to the first planet. Kato's retinue is going to arrive exhausted. Uh, we're going to end up seeing this custom field generator potentially come into play. Kato ends up triggering a primal howl. He's had a very dangerous only five cards remaining in his deck, so he's going to want to make sure that he doesn't accidentally deck himself and uh, lose the game at some point. Sam ends up generating four resources for himself. And let's see what exactly Eugenio wins. He's going to end up taking two cards in one resource, which means that uh, during this following turn's uh, headquarters phase, if he manages to win this planet, he's going to only have one card remaining in his deck. So this game is very much coming down to the absolute wire here. But what exactly are we going to see? It's going to be initiative for our Space Marine player. It seems like Sam has taken the courtesy of just reminding his opponent not to deck himself. Eugenio, of course, reminds Sam that he has the option of taking cards into hand. Hopefully he's not going to mill himself through his deck, uh, but... I suppose that's a little bit of a tip of the hat in regard to he's not going to be uh, using another drop pot assault if he didn't happen to have one. So let's see what this first action is going to be. Initiative is with our Space Marine. Sam indicates he has no actions. Kato indicates he has no actions. We see a Tactical Squad Cardenas exhaust in order to trigger area effect. A Rogue Trader dies. And we start to see damage doled out to these Orc units. The Zogwarts Runt Herders is going to take damage. It's going to generate a Snotlings token. Uh, one Snotlings token will be destroyed. Or actually... It looks as though Sam is going to use a copy of Promotion in order to save his uh, Snotlings token here. So he's going to be generating an additional token, I believe, with this Runt Herder. Kato's Stronghold is going to uh, ready a Tactical Squad Cardenas, and now Sam starts to distribute damage to the remainder of his Orc units here. And it looks as though Eugenio apparently changes his mind regarding that Cato's stronghold. Uh, Sam is in the process of finishing dealing out damage to his units. Okay, it seems as though Sam, I believe, was going to use his promotion to save the life of his shoot -a mob instead. And uh, maybe fatigue is setting in for all of our players and our commentator. Uh, the Snotlings token... All right, so I suppose I was maybe a little confused here. I guess at the present moment, uh, we've seen uh, one unit destroyed by Eugenio, which was that rogue trader, and we see a crushing blow hit the table, and then Eugenio ends up taking it back, 
and uh, now it's going to be Sam's opportunity to attack. We have two copies of Tactical Squad Cardenas ready. We have Captain Cato Sicarius at just a single point of life, and of course we have 18 total cards in the hand of our Space Marines player. So we see an Evil Sun's Warbiker attack for four against Tactical Squad Cardenas. Do we have an Indomitable? Do we have a two shield icon card? This is where things start to get incredibly nasty. We do see an Iron Halo, which means that he'll have plenty of copies of Indomitable left, so that Tax Squad Cardenas is only going to end up taking two points of damage, which means that it's very much going to be alive and well to trigger off an area effect volley now. Sam has no cards remaining in hand, so that area effect volley does go off at present. We see a Snotling's token destroyed, uh, an Evil Sun's Warbiker destroyed, a shoot -a mob destroyed, destroyed and another evil sun's war biker destroyed the zogwarts runt herders is going to take a point of damage so it's going to end up generating an additional snotlings token for him and now he's going to dole out damage to the remainder of his units these enraged orcs are going to probably continue accumulating damage. I can only imagine that Eugenio was probably saving those crushing blows to try and finish off these enraged orcs before they have an opportunity to attack. And with each and every area effect volley, things are looking more and more grim for our Space Marines player. I'll be curious to see whether or not Kato actually gets an opportunity to attack. We see a Snakebite Thug take a swing uh, of three at a Tactical Squad Cardenas, and if uh, Eugenio would like to save its life, it's going to be absolutely mandatory that he use an Indomitable at this moment, just because the Tempest Blade, that three shield icon card, does happen to be in play, and even a two shield icon third copy of Iron Halo or something like that is not going to be able to save the life of this tactical squad. So what exactly are we going to see in regard to shield from our Space Marine? The Tactical Squad Cardenas is destroyed, so 17 cards remain in hand for Eugenio, a grand total of 11 resources, and the Snakebite Thug has resolved its attack, and it's now going to be destroyed. And it seems as though those green arrows toward Cape Captain Cato Sicarius are simply going to indicate that Cato generates a resource. I guess I was a little confused earlier thinking that it somehow symbolized an attack, but it's just uh, Sam being courteous. So thank you, Sam, for helping your opponent and confusing the hell out of me. We see another uh, Tactical Squad Cardenas Area Effect Volley, a Snotling's Token is destroyed, and Zogwart's Run Herders is destroyed, but of course it does manage to at least generate a Snotling's Token to replace itself, and that's all the more resources for Captain Cato Sicarius, we see Crush Face also destroyed, and these enraged orcs are now at three points of damage, getting them dangerously close to the kind of territory where we could expect crushing blows to finish them off. Zogwart himself is very dangerously at uh, three hit points remaining. That means a single swing from Cato could eliminate him. We do happen to see an enraged orc swing for three against Cato. Do we see an indomitable? And of course we do. So Kato was going to take no damage whatsoever, and now there's no opportunity better than the present for Kato to take a swing and bloody Zogwart sending him being banished from that planet. So what are we going to see? Are we going to see Zogwart killed, or are we going to see the enraged orc just murdered? Sam indicates he has no action. And we see Kato exhaust, so he takes a swing at old Zogwart, and that means old Zogwart is going to actually trigger the custom field generator, which I have forgotten about. So all of that damage is going to be prevented, and now we see an equivalent amount of indirect damage uh, distributed among orc units at the same planet as the defender. So we see an enraged orc take two points of damage, and we see an enraged orc take one one point of damage. We now are going to see an enraged orc swing for four to try and kill this tactical squad Cardenas, which is now exhausted. Do we happen to see a second copy of Indomitable? We've only seen one played so far this game. I can only imagine that we will, but let's see it hit the table. 
we do end up seeing an indomitable played, so the life of that tactical squad, Cardenas, is indeed spared, but our Space Marine player is going to be all out of uh, ready units. Sam indicates that he has no actions. I cannot recall whether or not we do happen to see another copy of the Eager Recruit, so this is going to be the third and final Eager Recruit played out by our Space Marine player. What exactly is he going to attack? He's going to take a swing at Old Zogwart. Of course, Sam has no shields whatsoever. We do see that copy of Crushing Blow, which means Old Zogwart is bloodied. He can no longer attack in order to generate additional Snotlings tokens, and it's now going to be our orc player's turn and sam throws out the gg so an extraordinarily long but extraordinarily well played game so thank you so much for watching thank you to both of our players a tremendous congratulations to eugenio playing captain cato sicarius warlord of the space marines what an incredible match what a very tiring match to record and it's about to strike midnight so thank you very much for watching I suppose Eugenio is dumping his hand out onto the table to show us. He did happen to have another copy of Indomitable, a drop pot assault that he was very, very much probably should not have played, uh, but just a tremendous number of events staying in his hand. Sam still had 20 more cards in his deck than did Eugenio, so an absolutely incredible game by both players, but I suppose I'll just close this video by saying thank you very much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to this channel if you've not done so already, or if you are already subscribed, you're encouraged to share this content. As the more eyes there are on these videos, the more potential new players we might draw to our community, and of course, the more dollars we might send to Fantasy Flight Games, telling them to keep supporting and keep releasing new content for this game we all know and love. If if you'd like to get in touch with me, you're encouraged to do so through Twitter or through Facebook, and if at any point you feel so inclined to help me cover some of my file hosting and operating expenses, I'd be honored were you to visit my Patreon. But once again, thank you so much for watching, and as always, be sure to check back in again soon for ever more Conquest LCG content to come.